Multiplay 3.0 Tutorial 9 Linking MIDI Cues. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to link lighting cues to an audio file so that you can synchronize them. We're going to do it in an old school way where we simply use a series of MIDI command cues to fire the lighting cues on the lighting software, but they're going to be linked to the audio file as far as timing goes. First thing I need to do is take a look at my audio file and then determine what the timing is going to be for each of my light cues. So very simple here, I load it up into Audacity and in my timing counter down here I'm listing hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Now I'm just going to click through the file and determine where I want my lighting cues to occur. So I'd like a light cue to occur here, that's at 1 second, 444 milliseconds. I'd not like another light change, light cue to happen here at 4 seconds, 007 milliseconds. And I'm going to actually write these down. Another light change at 6 seconds, 756 milliseconds. Another light change at 9 seconds, 319 milliseconds. And I would do that for all of my lighting cues so I know exactly what the timing is when I want that lighting cue to occur in relation to the audio file. Now I'm going to go back to multiplay and I'm going to be using uh, simply a MIDI command cue to fire that button on my lighting software. Let's take a quick look at that MIDI cue and what that looks like. So it's going to be a note on command followed by a note off command. So I'm sending a note on on channel 1. It's note number 10. Velocity is 64 which is about 50% velocity. Then followed by a note off command same note with a velocity of 0. I've chosen an interval of a half a second, so it will allow a half second between each of these commands that's going to be sent. It'll send the note on command, then a half second later it will send the note off command. This is important because if we're trying to press the same button repeatedly, we have to turn the note off so that we can send the same note again. We just can't leave it in the on setting. Here is my audio file. I'm going to double click to open that. Here I'm going to choose start play. So as soon as this audio file starts, it will jump to the next cue, which is my MIDI cue, and actually fire or play this cue. Same thing for this MIDI cue. That's going to be start play, so that's going to jump to the next MIDI cue. Now if you notice that the timing for this MIDI cue is it's going to start immediately. Zero minutes, zero seconds, zero milliseconds. The next cue down here I put a pre-wait time of 1 second 400 milliseconds. That was the timing I wrote down from my list of times in Audacity. Next cue is going to wait 4 seconds and 100 milliseconds before it fires and sends the next MIDI message. Next cue is going to wait 6 seconds and 500 milliseconds before it fires. So basically all of these are all start play commands except for the very last one. That's simply a start advance. So when I fire this audio cue, it's simultaneously going to fire all of these command cues. They all have wait times. This one will wait 1.4 seconds, 4.1, 6.5, 9.3. So these are all my timings from Audacity. And it'll just wait and then it'll fire these then. So it ends up being a sequence of firing, which will then coordinate with my audio cue. So then let's bring up our lighting software and we can show you an example of this actually running. So I'm all ready to go here. My lighting software is up and operating. I'm already into my Q1, prime that. So my it's going to start out with a blackout and then uh, finally come to color. So as soon as the audio file starts, it's just going to advance to another blackout and I won't get my first lighting scene until about uh, 1.4 seconds in. So here we go. We're going to be synchronized so you can listen to the music, watch the cues over here advancing, and you'll see how it's going through my cue list here and firing. And there we have it. 
If you find that the timing's off slightly, you can just go into the individual queue and adjust that as far as milliseconds go. If you need it to be a little bit sooner or a little bit later, it's not going to affect the queues after it because each queue has its own wait time that it's waiting for before it fires. So you can go in and individually adjust your timing a little bit in the queue. So kind of the old school way of doing it, but it actually works very, very well.